Hi, my name is Emma Cameron, and this presentation is a part of the RDOS Noxious Pest Program, which has the goal of educating residential tree fruit growers on their responsibility to prevent and control insect pests. This video is a part of a series that highlights different fruit types and the different pests that anyone with a fruit bearing tree or shrub may come into contact with. These videos are available to anyone that is looking to educate themselves on fruit tree care and insect pests. The Okanagan Similkameen is home to one of the best growing regions in the country, with an abundance of farms, orchards, and vineyards. Farmers in this region gather and sell their produce at local markets eight months of the year, providing a bounty of fresh produce. But some of us still want to grow our own food, whether that be for helping children to learn about where their food comes from, or just the simple satisfaction of being more self-sufficient. But this comes with a responsibility that should be known before you consider planting a fruit bearing tree or a shrub. Fruit tree growers are responsible for preventing and controlling insect pests that can not only damage their own plantings, but also neighboring growers that largely depend on fruit productions for their livelihoods. Extra time, effort, and money will be required to adequately care for your fruit tree to not only avoid harmful insect pests, but also to grow fruit that is an optimal size and flavor. Although I will be referring to trees in this series, it should be known that this refers to any plant material that supports fruit production, including berry bushes and grapevines. Also, although this video series is focused on the pests and the bylaw in the regional district Okanagan Similkameen, most of the information provided is applicable to other nearby regions and even throughout the province of BC as a whole, as general fruit tree care is applicable to anyone thinking about planting a fruit bearing tree or shrub, and many of the pests discussed threaten fruit plantings beyond the Okanagan Similkameen. The videos in this series will provide tips on general fruit tree care, pest management as a whole, and the specific pests and diseases that affect different fruit bearing trees and shrubs. Before planting a fruit tree, or even if you have just inherited a fruit tree during a recent move, it's important to understand these five essential tasks before taking it on. The most important thing is to understand the RDOS bylaw that is on the RDOS webpage for fruit tree pests. It states the responsibility of the homeowner to prevent and control insect pest infestations, and explains the steps that occur if there is a complaint about your fruit tree. This is important to understand because if there is any negligence to general care, and pest prevention and insect infestation can affect the livelihood of neighboring commercial orchards. Once you understand this bylaw, you should next ask yourself what the reason is behind planting a fruit tree. If it is for decorative and ornamental purposes, there's a plethora of beautiful ornamental trees and shrubs at your local nursery that will be a much better option and at a fraction of the cost. And to bounce off that, you must also be prepared to invest more time and money in order to avoid pest infestations. This will include diligent sanitation practice, effective pruning, ensuring the soil nutrition is adequate, and proper harvest practice. Next is a very important step that is research. Do the research on your specific fruit tree that you're wanting to plant and understand its planting requirements and its susceptibility to pests. Once you have done this and you're at your local nursery or garden center, ask questions to the employees and suppliers so you can thoroughly understand what you're getting into. To prevent insect pests, most of the time, these strategies will be essential in your grapevine care routine. Sanitation is by far the most effective way to prevent pests. This includes keeping a clean ground cover, consistently removing any dead or rotting fruit and leaves, and having a consistent weeding routine. The ground cover should be diverse, meaning it has an abundance of species as it promotes natural enemies that keep the invasive species in, in check. Pruning is a skill in itself and research should be done before you tackle this. It should not happen in very cold temperatures as winter injuries can welcome pests and disease to your tree. And your vine should be pruned significantly each year to promote light and air penetration. At harvest time, it is essential that all fruit is removed and to make sure all diseased and insect infested fruit is destroyed properly. Grapevines tend to have more problems with diseases than pests, and to ensure that you don't have these problems in the following year, one should make sure the fruit is completely used or destroyed. This is the basic outline for an integrated pest management strategy. When you first think you may have a pest problem, following these simple steps will help in diagnosing your problem. First, you must identify the pest type and if it is a common and severe problem in the Okanagan Similkameen. 
For example, the very common coddling moth gets out of hand very quickly and requires immediate attention, whereas something like mites is very common in this area and a fruit tree can handle low numbers with, without any damage. Second, you must determine how severe the damage is. You must ask yourself if the tree will be severely affected and may die if immediate intervention is not done. You must also take into account the likelihood of spreading and how invasive it is. For example, the apple maggot should be something that's frequently looked for, even though the Okanagan smilgamine is free of this pest, as it's known to decimate crops in areas close by and must be reported immediately. Thirdly, you must determine what your plan of action is. If you decide that intervention is necessary, always use the least toxic control method possible. Using chemical intervention is typically not necessary for residential plantings and can sometimes do more harm than good by removing the beneficial insects that are keeping the pest in check. And always consult professionals if you're unsure about what to do. Poppers are among one of the more common pests in the Okanagan similkameen for grapes. They are quite small in nymph and adult form. Both are pale in color with red to brown spots. Both nymphs and adults will pierce individual leaf cells and suck out the contents for nutrients. The damage is represented by white spots on the leaves that eventually start to die and fall off the vine. To manage this pest, one should continually inspect the leaves when they have fully expanded because adults lay their eggs at this time. Additionally, you don't want to have too much vine vigor as that will welcome leaf hoppers. Therefore, moderate vigor and also less canopy density will help. Cutworms are another common pest in the Okanagan Similkameen, and there are many different species that can affect your grapevine. The larvae do the most damage and are thick-bodied caterpillars that like to live in the top 2-4 to four centimeters of the soil. They are distinguishable by how they curl up when they're handled. Adults are dark grey or brown moths that are rarely ever seen as they are not active in the daytime. Damage seen is mostly on developing buds and young shoots, and it can affect your crop yield. To manage this, you can do frequent checks in the early spring when they're very active, as well as keeping a diverse ground cover as cutworms prefer sandy soils with good drainage, which is the opposite of a diverse ground cover, as well as withholding mowing and weeding in the spring. The great mealybug is a distinguishable pest due to its mealy waxy residue. Eggs are orange in color and will reside in a white egg sac where they overwinter under loose bark and in the cordons. The adults are flat and oval shaped with the waxy filaments protruding all around its body. The damage they cause is mostly from the honeydew secreted during feeding, which often promotes a sooty mold that will grow. They can also carry viruses, which can decimate your crop and kill your vines. To manage this pest, you can withhold any pesticides being used because natural enemies are able to keep mealybugs relatively in check. You can also apply a sticky material around the vine to reduce the ants that will protect the mealybugs so they can feed on their honeydew. There are many other pests that can affect your grapevine and should be understood and looked for if any damage is seen. Grape phylloxera, grape leaf rust mite, western grape rootworm, wasps, brown marmoratus stink bugs, and thrips can all cause damage to your grapes and vine. The brown marmorated stink bug should be of note because the presence of only a few can taint your wine and it can cause lots of damage on other crop types, types extending beyond grapes and must be reported to the BC Ministry of Agriculture. Diseases and viruses can be even more problematic for grapes than pests. Powdery mildew is the most common and is diagnosed by a whitish or greenish powdery patch on basal leaves that can cause distortion of the leaf. Grapes are most susceptible during the first three to four weeks after bloom, but other parts of the vine are susceptible for the entire season. Botrytis bunch rot is also a problem in the Okanagan Similkameen and is distinguished by distorted drying clusters and a grayish mold on the fruit surface. Crown gall will cause girdling of vines, causing loss of vigor and sometimes death. Galls can be seen on the vines and sometimes on the roots. Leaf roll virus is sometimes hard to identify, but if there are physical symptoms, the leaves may shrivel or change color to bright yellow or red. Now that you know all about your responsibility to prevent and control insect pests, I hope that you weigh all of your options before deciding to plant a fruit tree. 
With extra time and effort, a fruit-bearing tree or a shrub in your backyard can offer healthy and delicious fruit, but you should speak to your local nursery or grower supply staff about what to expect before purchasing the tree. They are highly knowledgeable and can offer additional growing and pest avoidance tips and answer any of the questions you may have about growing fruit trees in your local region. Growing a fruit tree is time consuming and typically requires extra money to care for if you want delicious fruit with little to no insect pests. But you can also leave all the work to the professionals and support your local farmers markets instead. This is a good option if you are not willing to follow general care tips to prevent pests or spend the extra money to do so. Before we go, it is important to also remember that everywhere in BC is bear country. More than a quarter of all black bears in Canada live in BC, and here in the Okanagan, bears have come into conflict with humans in all parts of the region, even in the middle of every community, town, and city. Often these bears are lured in by unsecured garbage and attractants like fruit trees, berry bushes, and backyard fowl. Caring and maintaining your home-raised food sources goes a long way to having a pest-free, bountiful harvest that you get to enjoy while keeping wildlife wild and community safe. For more information on pests that affect different fruit trees, there are fact sheets available on the RDOS website that are available to anyone considering planting a fruit tree and are organized by fruit tree type. These are some important contacts and links that you should have readily available if you're considering planting a grapevine or already have one. There are two links that you should read on general care and pest management tools that are extremely helpful and are important reference guides. If you have any indication of brown marmorated stink bug, like I mentioned, you can contact Susanna or report it online with the BC Ministry of Agriculture.